Hello everybody, it is me, Pacific, and I'm going semi-faceless because I have a bad case of bed head, you know, sticking out at the sides. <laughs> it looks like a mop head was dropped on my head with the ends starched out. Yeah, I look real good. Been thinking about wags, trolls, naysayers, critics. When do we listen to them? Can I say never? <clears throat> this morning, I was delighted to open up my YouTube and see lots of comments by one individual, one right after the other, faceless, of course. If you are so, re if you claiming to be so religious, why don't you love these people? I won't deal with stuff like that <clears throat> because one of the things that Christians always get when dealing with critics that we need to take into account <clears throat> when we're dealing with people who claim to not hold to the views of the Bible not put their faith and trust in God who claim that they are not Christians do they have a right to hold us to a standard? Now, this is going to shock my viewers. No. As the Filipino song, No Si Balasi, says, I'll say again, who are they? What right do they have? They do not. And it needs to be stated that there's a fly on my screen, and it's really causing problems. You're done. See ya. Non-Christians do not have a right to hold us to a standard because, number one, they don't hold themselves to it. The true definition of a hypocrite, as the Bible defines it, as, as Jesus models us out by calling the religious leaders hypocrites. He basically accuses the religious leaders, you run around telling everybody that they need to do this, this, and that, and yes, you yourselves don't even do it. That is the secular world at large. Oh, you claim to be a Christian, and you did this and this and this. Now, don't get me wrong. There are Christians whose behavior is very offensive. But I'm going to make a statement that will prove itself true when everybody, when their life comes to an end and they stand before God. Not one person that's already deceased or is living now and will die is going to be able to use as an excuse before Holy God some other Christian's behavior as to why they rejected Christ. It's not going to fly. Salvation is a personal thing. God has made his offer of salvation available for all. He said, I'm perfect. I did not sin and I gave my life for you. Who, what, what are you focused on these other people for? When we're dealing with wags, wags are the faceless people. And he took the time to leave comment after comment after comment. <clears throat> we're going to address some of those. He didn't debate anything I said. Didn't come up with any intelligent, hey, I disagree with you because it was just garbage. Oh, you talk tough and you say that, you know, we're faceless, but you'd run away if, if I was right there in your presence. No, I wouldn't. Why? I'd run away from some troll because I made a video stating what I believe. Oh, no, my troll's standing in my face and I'm scared. The beliefs that I put out on YouTube, if I was forced to stand up before all of America and ask the question, do you believe all this stuff? I'd say, yes, I do. Why would I run? I've done no wrong by airing my viewpoints. I've done no wrong by stating what I believe. 
Does a non-Christian have a right to judge us? No. By what authority? They don't trust in God. They don't live by God's principles. They don't have a right, and their judgment of us will be invalidated by one simple thing. They're not Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Their judgment of us will be invalidated because of one simple thing. They are not Jesus Christ. They did not die for us. They are unable to declare us guilty or not guilty. They are unable to give us eternal life. They are unable to sanctify us. Why am I taking the time to tell my viewers this? Because in many churches in America, we hear pastors say, you got to be careful to protect your testimony. you got to be careful. You could say something that could really, really discredit you. Uh, can I be honest? Everybody I know says things to discredit themselves at least once or multiple times in their life. There are people who annoy us. There are people who do discredit themselves in front of us. That's fact. But for Pacific to say something and talk on air and say, there's a, times I have a hard time loving my enemies. Does that need to be judged by somebody who's not a Christian? They can do whatever they want. But their judgment is invalid. Number one, they're not the standard. Number two, they're not the standard giver. Number three, they do not submit themselves to the standard or the standard giver thus invalidating any judgment they might level against the true child of God. Why do I say that? Because many Christians live their whole lives, oh, I'm afraid I don't want to offend. You're going to offend, so you might as well get used to it. The Bible says, to the one where the aroma, the fragrance of eternal life, to the other where the aroma or stink of death. We are not going to please all people. Non-Christians are going to hate us. And non-Christians are going to hold that in our face, which is what the devil does. Oh, you sinned. That takes me off the hook for believing anything you have to say. Yes, it does, doesn't it? But it doesn't take you off the hook for believing anything that God has to say. Or anything that God has said that that other person spoke out to you. No. You don't get a free pass because somebody made a mistake that you determine is a sufficient reason for you to reject the truth of what they're stating. <clears throat> Those same people will watch television, Hollywood, and media and not take one look at the discrepancies, hypocrisies, and double standard of secular media darling children but one Christian says or does anything and they are quick to throw some barb I had fun removing every comment and blocking him at all levels <clears throat> he even covered that if you were real man you wouldn't block people <laughs> Yeah, if we were a real country, we'd just let the terrorists walk right in. If we were a real country, we wouldn't search everybody at the airport. If we were a real country and so brave, we wouldn't have security or security officers. We wouldn't have the CIA, and we wouldn't have the Secret Service protecting the president, right? No. Stupid. Because we live in a stupid world, full of sin and danger and evil, we have to have security, we have to have alarms, we have to have padlocks, and Pacific Ocean, Ocean Asia has every right to block and ban people from his channel that are unproductive. I don't need to rationalize that. This is not a video attempting to do so. But sometimes we need to make a statement to clear the air. When somebody gets banned, it's your fault, not mine. <clears throat> you think leaving 20 stupid, unintelligible comments, baiting? If you have something to debate, and there are people who can testify right here on my channel 
that though I don't agree with them and everything they've debated, and there's even people I've said, you're right, and I can't refute what you say. And there's been quite a few that have made comments that stand. But childish, baby, immature stuff? Yeah. You, you don't have credibility anymore. Yes, Pacific would stand face to face with every one of his trolls if they were to show up and say, yes, what I've said, I have said, and I will stand on it. What, I'm supposed to shake and fear and tremble and run, and I talk tough? I don't believe I've threatened anybody. I don't believe I've talked tough in the, in the sense of challenging people physically. I've talked tough on my stand. And some people get very uncomfortable with that. <clears throat> they feel provoked and they feel aroused. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Wags. Maybe that's what the verse in the Bible says. Love your wags. Love your critics. Pacific's channel is not about perfection. Pacific's channel is about talking about the reality of the struggles that we all have, Christian or not. Pacific's channel is about talking about issues. Pacific's channel is about keeping it real. The good thing is, is Pacific's in the driver's seat with regard to the trolls. It's been fairly quiet out there lately. There's been a few. And I do take the time to read what they say. To the Christian, this is what the Apostle Paul had to say. <clears throat> I believe it was in 1 Corinthians 6 or 7. <clears throat> Dare one have a matter against another? Dare he take it before the courts of the unsaved? Lawsuits among believers. And he gets into... He takes issue with that and he says, What, what are you doing? Can't you not can you not appoint people in the church to judge and settle these matters? Let's go a step further. Can't you even allow yourself to be defrauded? Know ye not that we shall judge the angels? <clears throat> if we're going to judge the angels, does somebody who claimed to be an atheist who says there is no God have a right to hold me to his standard? Absolutely not. That's hypocritical. It's hypocritical because you're not placing yourself under that standard. Number one, how can you even have the perfect ability that only God has to even make a righteous judgment against me? Yeah, but you claim to believe this and you're not living it. You don't have a right to judge that. Because you don't believe it. Just that alone proves to me that you know there's a God. Oh, they're going to have fun with that one, aren't they? Non-Christians expecting Christians to live up to a standard that non-Christians don't believe in and claim to deny the very God we believe in no. Now, can God use non-Christians to rebuke believers? Absolutely. If you're doing things and living in such a way, sometimes unbelievers can come up and say, you know what? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. God can and has done it. Can we ruin our testimony? Uh, every time we sin, I believe we ruin it. But God forgives, and we can start again today. You may not have impact on these people over here, but you can have impact on these people over here. <clears throat> the funny thing is, is, some of the things that I've been accused of by the wags on the channel that show up from time to time is that I'm not living out my Christianity. That's the long and short of it. And I'm like, really? 
When I say things bother me and I have a hard time finding love in my heart for certain people, certain ideologies, I don't have to love ideologies that conflict with God. No way. Love my enemies? Jesus was very clear about that. That's not easy to do. <clears throat> wrote Maharani this morning because she went to a service about a gentleman who reaches out to prisoners down there in Australia. She started to get teared up and he talked about people who've been rejected and not felt loved and she cried because that hit a chord with her. Well, it hits one with me too. <clears throat> Pacific grew up being blamed for everything, literally. My parents did to get along and that was my fault. That was told to me. It wasn't until years later when I sat down with my grandmother who said, Pacific... Your parents were fighting long before they adopted you. It had nothing to do with you. My mother's mature way of dealing with her husband was to throw a snit fit, clam up and refuse to talk to him for days, shutting doors, keeping herself barred away from crazy behavior. Excuse me. And the thing... That bothers me is that I was conditioned so much by this that when I got out as an adult and somebody give me a dirty look or I'd hold the door open for somebody and they wouldn't say thank you my first in instinct was what did I do wrong that's important to share to my viewers I always believe that I must have done something wrong. If I'd have done everything right, they wouldn't treat me this way. Do you know how many years of living in Duluth as a school bus driver? And I would second guess myself over and over and over. You talk about dysfunctional. A car's a block away in a 30 mile an hour speed zone. I'd put out the stop sign. The car had a block to stop. Kids start crossing. The car runs the stop sign. I honk. The woman driving it glares. And even then I thought, what did I do wrong? I made sure I gave her plenty of time to stop. And I lived my whole life going, I must have done something wrong. And I analyze it, analyze it. Did I do it by protocol? Did I do it by the book? We should analyze ourselves, but some of that can be demonic. Did my mother ever question the way she treated us? Did she ever stop and go, man, am I doing this by the book? No! I was reading in the devotion today. The writer said some, boy, did I connect with this one. The devotional writer was in his car. He noticed a car in front of him who stopped to let somebody out of a parking lot on a busy traffic road. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten out. And he thought to himself, wow, that was nice, that motorist. But then when the people who pulled out didn't wave thanks or say thank you, then he chased him, rolled down his window, and acted like he was going to ram them, and just went ballistic. And the writer said that we should do acts of kindness whether we get thanks or not. And I thought, ah, that's convicting. Can I be honest? I've held doors open for women, and I see such rudeness. I remember in Duluth, okay, this, this is Duluth, Minnesota, liberated. Even though I'm young-looking, there was something called the Skywalk system. It's, uh, it's up the second floor. There was a system of glass-enclosed <clears throat> pedestrian bridges that connected buildings. So when it's 35 below zero in a Minnesota winter, you can walk from one building to the other without having to hit the street. All heated, of course. And I'd hold doors open for people when you go from one building to the other through the tunnel corridors. And the women would not say thank you. And it really got to me. And this happened so much and I'd been there so many years that I finally, I just walked through at a fast pace. I'd fling the door open and not hold it and march on. And then those same women would go, thanks for holding it for me. Wow, I did and then you don't say thanks. Okay. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. 
Christians are not obligated to live under the schizophrenic bipolar behavior of the world. Let me make that clear. Sometimes you have to use wisdom. Yes, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemies, do good to those, blah, 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 blah. But we live in a crazy world. Sometimes it calls for wisdom. Do you stand there in a world today like this and keep holding the door open? I'd say no. Push it open far enough or it doesn't slam on her face and carry on. Do you see an old woman or mother carrying a baby in all her bags? Yeah, you might want to hold it for her. Have some of them not thanked? You betcha. But what is our motivation for being kind? Is it the thanks and the praise we get? That's telling. I have been crapped on most of my life. And I have become quite defensive over the years. And when you're blamed for everything, I still feel that. Some viewers would say, oh, do you have a problem being criticized? Let me ask you, do you? We all do. The question we need to ask is, is the critique valid or is it invalid? Who is it coming from? How does that person live their life? When we're dealing with something as nebulous as YouTube, <laughs> do I need to take it as valid People who don't put their face, people who don't make videos, and people who just wag, 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 comment after comment. No. We're not obligated to take any of that. In the debate, you're saying, if you're a real man, you wouldn't block me. Now, that's manipulation, and I'm not going to be manipulated. Bye-bye. You are the weakest link. You've been blocked. Go find somewhere else to toddle along on. Go troll somewhere else. Because they're not doing anything constructive. As I said before, they're just wags. You know, wags when Jesus was around. Look at, he's eating with wine bibbers and sinners. Uh, hello, that's why I came. I'm not here to reach you jokers because you're not interested in truth. You have an agenda. And so do trolls. Trolls are discontents, malcontents, that feel brave, hiding behind a monitor, and yes, Pacific would face every single one of them with police security and an escort if they all said, show up at certain place, certain time, and we'll meet you. Good. And I'll bring the police with me because today, am I afraid? There's some crazy idiots out there. There are people sitting on this computer right now. There are people that get on computer sites to lure people, to harm them, rape them, kill them, steal from them. No, you don't just show up. But yes, <clears throat> I would stand up before everybody and say, this is what I believe and I'm not backing down. Pacific has sp spent 48 years of his life facing his fears. Why am I going to stop now? I'm not the one that goes down an alley looking for fights. I'm the one that sometimes the only way to go is down the alley and people want to fight me. And I've been, I have as a child been pinned up against garage walls and fences, minding my own business, knowing I didn't have the physical strength to deal. And yet even then I still would look them in the eye and say, okay, so you can kick the crap out of me, then what? You're not going to shut me up unless you kill me. Usually at that point, they let go of your shirt and you fall to the ground in a heap and they walk on. Because in their dumb little brain, they go, yeah, he's got a point. If I beat him up, what, what good is that going to do? Yeah, dummy, get out of here. Because people threaten and intimidate, that's going to make me change my views. Gee, that's not much of a man, is it? Pacific believes what he believes, unashamedly, unapologetic. 
for those of us that are Christians, yes, we need to watch how we live. We better be sincere. We better be genuine. And we better be real and honest. That doesn't mean we're not going to blow it. We're going to blow it. Take ownership of it. <clears throat> Apologize to the people that you've harmed, wronged. But we are not under the judgment of the world system. They don't have the authority. They don't have the right. They don't submit themselves to God. Why are we going to place themselves under their bar? We don't have to. We are not supposed to. And Paul even says, Christ is the judge. He's the judge. Actually, God the Father is the judge. And those of us that are in the blood of Jesus, we are not under condemnation. The world condemns, but the world stands condemned. So how can we sit our, place ourselves under a condemned man who's waiting to drop into the pit of hell and take what they say is valid? You can't. They're not the standard. They're not the standard giver. And they don't submit themselves to either. Therefore, invalidating them. That's a fact, people. Take it to the bank. That doesn't mean you can live any way you want because you have to submit yourself to God and the standard. And guess what? That's sobering. But when it comes to dealing with our critics, look at who's doing the criticism. Some godless evolutionistic fool? See ya. You will not be there on Judgment Day to give an assessment of my works. God will. Know that, viewers, and be encouraged. We are not subject to the judgment of unbelievers. We are subject to the judgment of God, and the judgment of God has been removed through Christ in the context that we will not be condemned into hell. We will still be held accountable for deeds done in the body, whether good or bad, on that day. And we will either suffer loss or gain reward but ourselves being saved scarcely as though by fire, says that in Corinthians. Pacific believes in eternal life. I do not believe one can lose their salvation, and people can do whatever and say whatever they want, but the Bible doesn't teach that. Jesus himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah, but we can leave him. I will never leave him. Or her. We can't leave the God who is not leaving us. We can turn our will and say, I know I'm a toddler and I'm not going to submit to you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When we are his, it says, I and my father are one. All the father has given to me will come to me. I'd say we're in pretty good hands with all state. So, back to wags, ignore them, laugh, and say, God, help them to open their eyes, their own hypocrisy, lunacy, and bipolar internet behavior, because that's all it is. We are not subject to the condemnations and guilt trips of unbelievers. They don't pass the test. They have not put their faith and life in the hands of Jesus Christ, who is my God, who is my judge, who is my Savior. Why am I going to listen to these clowns? They're faceless. And they'd better repent, or they will be in hell themselves. And I don't think they're going to be trolling down there much, or at all. They're going to be so enamored with it, so caught up in their own weeping and gnashing of teeth and pain and separation from God and being aware of all their sins for all eternity. Oh no, it ain't going to be fun. So have your fun now, trolls. Enjoy it, because it's all going to come to an end. You're on the train ride limited, the Troll Express limited, and when it ends, you get all eternity to think about all your stupid little comments. I don't want to be in your shoes on that day. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.